we look at the U.S. economy, which is looking up a little bit after a pretty rough winter, the GDP jumping more than a half a percent to 2.3 percent. Economists say consumers are spending a bit more and more of the products are being traded abroad. The Commerce Department also revised the numbers for the past three years. They say that the economy grew at only 2 percent from 2012 through 2014. And folks, that is a very sluggish growth rate. Uh, and lower than economists thought it was. It'll come up a week from today at our debate in Cleveland, Ohio. Republican presidential candidates are working to separate themselves from the field and meet Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal in studio now. How you doing, Governor? Nice right. to see you again. You've been, you've been hanging out here for a while. Thank you for having me back. You said this yesterday on CBS. I want to play that for our audience now. Watch. There are a lot of candidates running that don't have the bandwidth, don't have the backbone, don't have the experience to get the job done. I do. Don't have the backbone. That's exactly right. Name some names. Well, look, this is what I hear from the voters out there. What I hear is this is the most important election of their lifetimes. Here's why they're frustrated. The Republicans took the Congress, House and the Senate, didn't repeal amnesty, didn't repeal Obamacare, didn't shrink the size haven't, uh, of the federal government, haven't balanced the budget. They're tired of the establishment in D.C. They're tired of the leadership in both the House and the Senate, in both Democrats and Republicans. What I hear from voters in Iowa, New Hampshire, these other states, is it's not enough to send a Republican to the White House. We need to make big changes. And Bill, look, you've got Secretary Clinton, President Obama, they're taking us on the path of turning the American dream into the European nightmare, where they celebrate dependence. You were just talking about the economy. We've got record low participation rate in the workforce, record high dependence on food stamps. That is the opposite of where we need to be going. I've heard you speak about that a lot. But back to the question. You're in a field of 16 or 17 at the moment. Who does not have the backbone? Well, look, I think a lot of these guys are running, but that's for the voters to decide. You know, one of the things that the, can't, the voters don't want are folks like me or the pundits or the donors or the party leaders trying to clear the field or trying to say this one can't run or this one shouldn't run. I think it'll be evident. I think as the voters kick the tires, they'll see some of these guys, they give a lot of great speeches but they haven't run anything. We've got a first-term senator in the White House who had never run anything before, needed on-the-job training. That's why you got a bad deal with Iran. That's why we're not supporting Israel. And that's why the economy's not growing. We can't do that again. You've got a lot of folks that give a great speech, will say outrageous things to move in the polls. That's not the same as having real experience. Let me show you some of the, uh, the folks who don't have the backbone, let's say. All right, on screen now, we got a Reuters poll that has a little less than 1% screen right. I know you're working to change that. Also, Quinnipiac has a poll. You're at 2% in the Quinnipiac poll. You believe the trend is your friend right now. Absolutely. Back, back it up. Absolutely. Well, look, we've been spending time in Iowa. The, the crowds are getting bigger everywhere we go. We have standing room only uh, uh, crowds at our events. We're going to every single county. There was a poll that came out showing us uh, tied for fourth place in Iowa. The faves on faves were moving in Iowa, we're getting momentum. We're spending time talking directly to the voters, and we stay and answer every last question. Not every candidate can do that. We're seeing a movement growing in Iowa. Look, I think the voters are beginning to get serious about this. I think they're paying attention to this. I'm the only one with a plan to repeal and replace Obamacare. I'm the only one with detailed plans on education, on energy, on investing in defense. Every Republican's got a one-liner saying they'll repeal Obamacare. We're the only ones saying this is how you exactly do it. Uh, on the issues now, um, immigration will come up next week, undoubtedly, and in the weeks and months after that. Also, sanctuary cities. You're now pushing to hold mayors in America criminally responsible. Absolutely. And you're, uh, what you would propose is to allow victims of crimes committed by illegals to take civil action. That's, that's never been done before. That's right. Now, look, these mayors, these city councilmen, these others that are creating these sanctuary city policies, they're flaunting federal law. They are partners in crime. Let's make them accomplices. Congress should change the law so they are, they are aiding and abetting these criminals. You, you look at what happened in San Francisco. It's happened elsewhere as well. Make them criminally liable. Then I bet you you wouldn't have all these, these mayors, these city councilmen trying to flout the federal law. But seems the like seems like it's a tough sell with this administration. Well, make them look in the faces of those victims' families. Make them go talk to those victims' families and say, why does it make sense? We're deporting people. They commit felonies. We deport them. We let them come back. We have these sanctuary cities where they won't even be deported. They're allowed to stay. That is a magnet for people to come here and break our laws. Secondly, there should be civil liability so victims' families, if they can't get the authorities to act, they can sue themselves, not only the mayors and the, and the councilmen, but also those that aren't going after these city officials to create, that create these sanctuary uh, cities. On immigration, I've looked at a lot of the different positions, you and others, and it does not seem to be a clear distinction on a lot of the specifics for immigration. That's going to flush itself out um, in Cleveland, Ohio next week. Well, also on in Ohio. We are partnering with Facebook. 
Um, and so we've been asking a lot of folks for their questions for candidates like you. Here's one now, okay? If elected president, what will be the first thing you'll do as president of the United States of America? The very first thing that the president can do is repeal all these illegal, unconstitutional executive orders. The president doesn't need Congress to do that, whether it's on amnesty or on Obamacare. Secondly, I think the president needs to meet with the, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the military leadership, to say, we need to send a message. We're standing with our allies. Our enemies need to fear and respect us. We're going to stand with Israel. We're not going to let Iran become a nuclear power. Obviously, once Congress is in, you can repeal Obamacare and replace it, lower flatter tax code, energy independence. Well, well, that's, 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 that's all on day one. Well, well, those are some of the priorities. <laughs> Whoa, that's day, a busy day. First day is repeal those illegal executive orders, first thing. Going back to immigration, I do think there's a difference. So earlier this week, Jeb comes out, doubles down on amnesty. I think the gang of eight, I think that the, the amnesty approach is wrong. I think the Jeb Bush approach is wrong. You've got to secure the border. I think I'm the first candidate that called for that not this comprehensive approach, simply securing the border. And secondly, I think I'm the only candidate that's really put such an emphasis on assimilation and integration. Well, In other words, folks that want to come here should adopt our values and learn English. And more to come on that. Thank you for your time, Governor. We'll see you next week in Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, that's a mouthful. <laughs> we get a lot in in a short period Thank you, of time. sir, very much. Martha, what's next? Tune into Fox one week from today, Thursday, August 6th, when Fox News and Facebook bring you the first Republican presidential primary debate of the 2016 race. We are all very much looking forward to this live from Cleveland. We want you to be a part of it. You can submit your questions by going to Facebook.com slash Fox News. Tell us what you want to know from these candidates, and we will ask it.